Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Eric Barrio. I've been a core member of Open Remote for a bit more than louder. Okay, sure. Uh, a core member of Open Remote for a bit more than uh, 12 years now. Uh, I'm not the person who was supposed to give this talk, so I'll do my best to walk you through. Don't hesitate to come back afterwards, uh, and I can point you to some of my colleagues that worked on those projects. Uh, a, a bit away. Okay. Okay, I'll do my best. And speak louder? Okay. <laughs> okay, so Open Remote, it's a 100% open source IoT platform. So it would do whatever you expect from an IoT platform. Connect to the devices, have some logic, and have end, end user, uh, user interfaces. We'll come back to that uh, a bit later. So open source, fully free, available on GitHub, and a community throughout the world that's uh, pretty active but also some projects that we work on with uh, some uh, companies. Um, and that's mainly what the core team does when I said professional, it's working on those projects. Um, and so they have projects uh, that are in home security or smart cities, typical IoT, projects in more exotic things like uh, smart uh, clothing, agriculture, and of course a lot of projects in the energy domain, energy management, but also some um, linked to other aspects of uh, energy. Uh, and we'll go into a bit more detail on the Nottingham City project a bit later. So looking at Open Remote, what is it? It's uh, mainly um, a middleware um, developed in, in Java. Um, it has a database that is both for the configuration of the system and for the state of the system. So the current values of your sensors, but also all the historical data. Um, it has quite a few connections using standard protocols, so you can connect to gateways or to data feed, we'll see that later, uh, or some property hardware. Uh, it has a set of user interfaces. Um, you have standard more management uh, user interfaces where you can configure the system or see the values or trigger some actuators. You get Insight, which is a dashboarding kind of uh, application. But we also have uh, a set of web components freely available that you can use to build your own custom application for a given project. And so you have an application that you can access through a browser, or you can embed it into a mobile app, what we call the consult. And you can also connect to other systems like Grafana, Power BI, if you want to have uh, extra features. Then you have, of course, a uh, mechanism for the logic. We support different type of rules engines, simple uh, through the UIs uh, like IFTTF, so if then the, that, or more advanced features like uh, Groovy scripting, so if you want to really go really deep. Um, there is a set of default services, so building blocks that you can use, for instance, to push notification to the mobile phones or to place devices on a map or to implement optimization services, what we'll talk about in a minute. And this is, of course, built with security in mind, so there's a strong identification, authentication, and authorization um, layer, layer in the system. So coming to energy optimization. We'll talk about two things. Uh, as we say, what we call smart home, but it can very well be a smart office or even an office complex. Basically, is the concept of a, an island behind a meter, and you have kind of a, a sole proprietor of the, the island. And then when you move to the smart district, it's um, a composition of many islands behind one transformer. Uh, the problems are a bit different, but the, the system is the same. So if you look at the system, um, yeah, whatever. I'll do this. Uh, you have your renewable energy, so solar and wind. Uh, you have the grid, both import and export. You have a battery with charge, discharge, and you have your loads, your consumers, but can also sometimes uh, 
feed in energy back into the system, some uh, electric vehicles can do that. So the goal for the smart home is to optimize either based on the cost, so you want to pay the least amount, or on the environmental, environmental footprint, so you want to be green as much as possible. The data that we have to do that is for the renewable energy, we are going to uh, estimate the consumption based on the peak characteristics of the installation, so how much your solar power can uh, produce, solar panel can produce, and on uh, weather data, so we can take uh, the estimate of that. For the grid, we have like dynamic uh, tariffs, so people can, for instance, have contract where they pay a different uh, tariff by the hour or by the quarter even, and so we have the data to, uh, to know those costs. Uh, but there is also a carbon cost associated with the type of energy that is produced. The battery, it's a charge discharge, but there is also um, a cost, so a levelized cost of storage. So for instance, if your battery costs a thousand euro and it can do a thousand charge discharge, every charge discharge cycle is one euro. So you need to take that into account when optimizing. Uh, and so for the loads, we have the path consumption and we do a uh, weighted exponential average to predict the future consumption on that. So now what we are trying to optimize, uh, as I said, is minimizing the cost of the carbon exhaust uh, based on all this, this data. And so the system will um, control the, what we call the flexible load. So depending on this data, it can decide when to charge or discharge the battery. It can decide when to charge or discharge potentially uh, the electric vehicles, or it can decide to control heavy loads like heat pumps where you have a bit of freedom on when you can, uh, you can uh, set them up or power them up or the temperature set point, things like that. Um, and this can be automatic, of course, but it could also be simply manual by pushing information to the end user through the UI. When you move to the smart district or the collection of island, uh, behind the transformer, you have uh, a slightly different problem, which is the transformer that is between your district and the grid, which has a peak capacity. And so what you want to uh, make sure is that you stay under the capacity of the transformer, both for import and for export. So when there is a real high production of renewable, you don't want to surcharge the grid. Um, so... Um, the data that we have is basically the same for the battery, for the renewable, and for the loads. In addition, we have uh, real-time uh, peak power, or no, not peak, uh, net power of the transformer, so we know how much the transformer is currently taking in and out. And we also can then adjust the optimization algorithm with a fake kind of tariff. So if we know that we need to um, uh, change the, the, the consumption on the transformer, we can like fake how much the electricity would cost so that the optimization algorithm would steer one way or another. And so we keep doing the optimization at the, each individual island, but we want to push for the global optimization so that the grid stays, or the transformer and the grid stays under control. Um, and so one additional problem comes now with the fact that you have many household, for instance, in a district, which can have their own technology. So it's quite complex to control them, to automate them at all. So one way, and we're uh, exploring that, is um, interfacing with more home automation system, like Open Hub or Home Assistant, for instance. Um, another way is through manual impact. And so what we can do is send personal challenges to every household, uh, where the people can earn points, uh, which basically earns them money if they play nice within the whole ecosystem. Um, and there is the last thing we can do is uh, we also have shared flexible loads. So for instance, in a district, you can have uh, the shared uh, charging station for the electric vehicles, and then we can control and, for instance, diminish the available power so that we can also keep the grid under control. So that is the general idea, that is what we are uh, aiming for. Uh, there are several uh, pilot projects that, um, that are starting to implement that. So this is the global idea. One of them, 
is the Nottingham uh, City Council. The idea that it's a smart home, but really it's, it's uh, more smart, well, we could say office or office complex. The idea is to control the charging of all the vehicles, electric vehicles that are used by the City Council at Nottingham. And so what it means is you can control a global static battery plus the charging of all the vehicles to save money. You can also uh, control, uh, or you want to have your vehicle charged at least to some uh, level because you want to use it in the end. And you also want to prevent surpassing the limit, the power limit that you have for the whole uh, district. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, council. And so what you see on the right is uh, the dashboard interface that we have in Open Remote that uh, can show you the different uh, location of the vehicles. So we can track that anonymously, but we can track the different vehicles and the global power that is currently used by charging of those vehicles. If we now move to um, the smart uh, district, this is a project that is currently starting in Amsterdam where we have a community of about 500 households that are part of this project. One thing is each household can control their uh, consumption by uh, we interface with the meter and they can see a real time uh, information about the power they're consuming through the mobile app so they can adapt their own consumption. We have uh, the challenges that I talked about so they see how the whole district is doing and their proposed challenges so that they can uh, play nice within the neighborhood and by doing so earn money. And we can also, as we said, uh, limit the, if, if there is really an emergency, we can control the heavy loads that are shared throughout the district to make sure that we don't go above the limits of the transformer. So it looks a bit like that, and these are designer slides, so uh, there are some inconsistency in the, the wording, but globally, every uh, participant will see uh, his own consumption with a bit of history on how the district is doing. And the green dots uh, around the, the indication are a global indication of how the district is going is doing so it's it's really gamification there now you see that at some point the neighborhood might be reaching the limit so we are reaching the limit at the transformer level and so we will propose to the person in each household a challenge saying well for the next hour you need to keep your consumption below this level if the person accepts then for the duration of the challenge, they will see their own consumption, see the limit, how they are doing against it, and uh, how many points they will, they will uh, collect. And so they also receive tips to say, well, potentially, if you want to keep uh, your consumption under the limit, maybe charge your car a bit later or uh, set uh, the temperature a bit lower, something like that. When the challenge is done, they see how many points they have uh, collected. And then they, of course, can see a summary of all the challenges they've completed, how many points they have earned, etc., etc. This is the view from the manager. So we can see the different meters that are all connected to the system. At this stage, I say it's a pilot project, they have 50 meters connected. Uh, the project just started. The target is to have 150 by the end of the month, February. And with 150, this should be enough to already influence the whole behavior of the district. So with 150 connected meters, we should be able to have an impact really on how the district and the, the impact on the transformer. And so this is here the dashboard where you see uh, a summary uh, the, the, the small diagram I showed with the consumption and the load on the transformer, how we are doing compared to the peak performance uh, of the transformer, a gra historical graph and things like that. So thank you. These were the two projects that are currently uh, running on energy management at this stage. There have been others. Um, you can uh, find uh, the open remote platform in the GitHub repo. There is also the forum where the community is active and other information. Thank you very much.